Welcome to the Breakthrough Advisor Podcast. In this podcast, we inspire advisors with ideas and pathways to break through barriers and build a thriving retirement income business. We will interview innovative technology developers, business leaders, and successful advisors, then help you organize and execute these ideas to move your business forward. Hello, this is Jack Martin. I'm the virtual CMO for InsureMark, and I want to thank you for joining us today on the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. This is where ambitious advisors come to learn how to accelerate the growth and experience within their business. Today, uh, I'm going to play the role of the guest, uh, and I've got Patrice Sikora here playing the role of the interviewer. That's so <laughs> that I don't sit here and talk to myself for the next 25 minutes. Uh, Patrice, what am I going to talk about today? Well, I think you're going to talk about the seven steps to an effective marketing plan, but I'm also here to challenge you. You may come up with these ideas and you may talk about them, but Jack, I'm going to sit here and say, why? Why? What, what do they do? So we got seven steps here. How many do you want to get through today? Uh, let's see how let's see how it goes. Uh, you know, we may get through two or three, and we may get through one. But I, I think we need to start with with understanding the problem. All right, and the problem is, um, as we've discovered through uh, our listening to our advisors and through uh, our surveying of thousands of, of advisors over the last few years, very few of them have a written marketing plan. And that, that's a problem because it opens the door to getting off course. It opens the door to um, forgetting to do important steps. It opens the door to a lot of different issues. Um, if you don't have a written plan, we all know that that makes sense. The data is crystal clear. When you study the elite financial advisors and the elite financial practices in our business, what you see is is a, a couple of common denominators. And one of them is that they have a written uh, marketing plan. So uh, we've asked as, as recently as this morning, a group of uh, key financial advisors that we work with, how many have a written financial plan, a written marketing plan? And the answer was, one third yes, one third no, one third not yet. Well, now those so, no's, those no's, did they admit that they hadn't thought about it or where they were going to do it or did they just didn't see the the, pro, the reason to do it? Uh, I didn't dig into it. I, I didn't dig into it. I was, uh, and and that's a, that's a great couple of questions that we will dig into as to why they don't. But we did have uh, a number of them raise their hand and say, "Hey, can you help me mm -hmm. uh, get a plan?" And so I, I think it's, it, it, you know, we're we're in the planning business. Uh, you know, we give plans to our clients, but we don't always, you know, plan for ourselves. The cobbler's family has no shoes, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the tools to help them. Hundred percent. So our team at Insuremark. This is what they've been doing for the last four months is working with their key advisors to help build their plans for 2023. And so if you don't have a plan today, we, we can make that happen. So here are a couple of the issues that, that I think hope encourage and stimulate the, the our listeners to uh, start the planning process. The first is that what consumers want and what consumers expect from their financial advisor is changing. So Back in the day, my DNA is financial advisor. I've been a CFP, RIA, registered securities principal, branch office manager, et cetera, for over three decades. And so back in the day, it was all about helping clients accumulate as much money as possible. Um, but now that's changed. Uh, as an advisor, uh, today, it, it's it's about how do how do I create an income stream decumulation for to to and and manage the longevity risk? How do I manage these healthcare uh, issues and and independent mm -hmm. living issues? How do I manage tax? Um, how do I take care of of children? You know, and get them on the launch pad. So the demands are changing. And they're literally changing uh, within the last 12 to 15 months. We saw last year consumers were concerned about market volatility and downturns in the market and so on, but they were more concerned about tax. And a good chunk of them were even more concerned about the healthcare question. So when we surveyed our advisors, 
uh, what they said was meeting new client demands and offering new services to those clients is, is their biggest issue that they're staring at for 2023. So that's change. That probably means we need means we need to think a little bit differently about what we're going to do from a plan perspective. The second thing that they said was super important was closing the client acquisition gap. Now that's all about marketing. Um, that that's about how to, how do you find your audience. How do you communicate with your audience? What are you telling your audience in order to um, move them along the customer journey and get them into a place where they're going to ultimately become clients and and then advocates of your service? So um, that th those are the the things that were kind of the genesis around why do we need a new tool? Why do we need to revisit this subject? Um, and so that that stimulated us to go out. And, and talk to a number of successful firms about what they did to build their million dollar business. And there was a consensus around seven elements to that. And as Patrice teased at the outset, we, we'll, uh, we, we're not going to get through all seven today, I'm pretty sure, but we'll, we'll get through two or three of them and we'll, we'll cover the rest at another time. So well, let's take the, the first one because you're already touching on that one as it is. Target audience. Who is your audience? How do you define that? So, exactly. That's a big question. And so the challenge for most uh, financial advisors that we talk to when you ask them to define a target audience is um, they feel like they're going to miss something if they get a narrow focus. So uh, there's wisdom in, in this uh, uh this phrase, there are riches in the niches, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's seriously that that that's hardcore wisdom. And we, we can point to a number of of our friends who are financial advisors and successful financial advisors across the country. And what you see are the most successful uh, are in a niche. Uh, they might be working with airline pilots in San Diego, or they might be working with dentists in the San Joaquin Valley. They might be working with architects in Colorado. Um, and and their 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 practices are uh, exploding. Uh, the the opportunities are great, and they're much happier. They're uh, much happier. They're focused on a group they like to work with. They are. They are. And you know, if you if you start to 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 unpack that that concept, why why is that working for them? You know, uh, what you learn is less is more. Uh, by being more focused, uh, what you're able to do is is understand the people you're talking to better. So we live in this hybrid world right now, right? So uh, no one's 100% virtual anymore. No one's 100% live anymore. We're all kind of a mixed bag, right? Um, and and whichever uh, you know of those you're you're working in, building trust with the person you're you're talking to building getting their confidence in you are are really key and and if you're going to do that it it requires you to demonstrate a high level of empathy for them to to to, to convey empathy you've got to have some understanding of them mm -hmm. and so having a, a niche understanding you know your audience and and their their fundamental pain points really allows you to communicate at a different level than if I've got to communicate to all 65 year olds who are thinking about retiring. Uh, that that's, that's, that's a pretty broad definition of an audience. And there are a lot of segments in that, that have different types of, of, of issues. So when you have a stew and you cook it down, it's much richer. It's got a better flavor to it. When you just kind of let it get too watery there's no flavor there's nothing you got to focus yep. you got to boil it down so you've got the people yep. you want exactly exactly so um the target audience you know is, is important it's um uh, a challenge for most financial advisors because they're afraid they're going to miss something uh but you know if 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 we can and and it there's it's always hard uh you know to change so we get that um and, and it's hard to, to want to stand out. Okay. And if you, if you do a good job of understanding your target audience and, and you can, then we'll get into messaging next, but if you can articulate, you know, what it is you can do for them, that's unique. Um, they're able to tell their friends, 
you know, this is what Patrice does for me. This is what Jack does for me. Um, and, and so now you're much more likely to get referrals if your clients can articulate what you do. If, you're, if your clients, you know, don't have a good idea of what you do and, and who you work with and who, who your, your services would be right for, um, it's pretty hard for them to, to be your advocates, you know, from, from a referral perspective. So word of mouth and how to get contagious, you know, all of that, it really helps to, to have a target audience. So. Is there a critical mass or a pain point that an advisor has to has to reach before they can target? I don't think so. The, there are a couple of groups uh, in the United States who who have built significant networks of younger financial advisors who start out targeting a niche. Uh, and it's much easier for them to grow and get to critical mass because they are so focused. That they don't have to to master planning for college and for infants. They they can focus on one end or the other, if that mm, makes any sense. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, talk to me about messaging. Are are, are advisors shy about messaging? <laughs> well, it, um, it depends on what you think messaging means, right? You know, again, standing out is hard. Saying things that are different is hard, but that's the challenge. It, the reality is today, the me the volume of messages that our our target audience, our our ideal prospects, are receiving is is huge. It's a tsunami. I heard uh, over the holidays it was something like ten thousand messages a day were hitting consumers. And so how do, how do you stand out in that? What do you say that is different uh, that, that's going to stop the scroll is what we like to say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, standing out is hard. Uh, differentiating yourself is hard. There's the risk factor we talked about earlier, but also coming up with the message itself, um, you know, is, is difficult. But, it, but before even you start, even you get there, the, the, there's an important mindset that we, we need to embrace. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're all kind of guilty of the, um, if I just tell you how much I know, if I just give you more facts, more PowerPoints, uh, more analytics, more charts, and more graphs, then you'll see why you should do what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, that that doesn't work. It, it actually, as as human beings, we're, we're kind of... Uh, wired a different way when it comes to that uh we're we're more driven uh by by finding people who want to help us solve our problems rather than finding people who want to convince us to do something and so what happens as we you know open up these beautiful four color brochures and whip out the latest software and and run the analytics and so on the the anti sales radar goes up in our in our clients' minds, and they feel like you know this guy's trying to convince me to do something. He's trying to sell me something. Okay, right now, I'm not saying that you can't get through that. All right, but uh, that's a roadblock. And so now, what you've got to do is you got to recognize that there are going to be these roadblocks if we go down that path. So why why not start from the outset and say, okay, so let's figure out what the roadblocks are. Uh, before we get into this process, tell me, you know, what, what did it take the example of the marketing plan? Okay. So tell me what you've got planned for 2023. Okay. Tell me why, you know, what you've got planned is important to you and, and tell me why you haven't made these changes in the past. And, and I will have enough pieces laid out on the table to help someone achieve the goals that they're looking for, as opposed to my coming in and saying, you know, I, th I think what you need in order to have an income that'll last, you know, as long as you live, you need to do this. Well, that might not be on my radar. I might not have thought about that. You know, I might not be ready to do that. It I might feel like doing something like that is going to cost me too much money. It's going to cost me too much time. Uh, but, but I but don't understand I it. Well, I don't understand that. And as soon as the prospect says that, then out come the charts and graphs yeah. and the tables and the analytics and so on. And now we're into this push and shove and match. Um, so it's uh, it, it, the messaging itself, you know, really starts with this notion. Um, I, I want to tell people and I need to know what the problems are. I'm going to tell them I, I can solve for them. So that means I got to have a target audience. <laughs> then I got to figure out what their problems are. And then I've got to figure out how to articulate for them what it is that I do to help them solve their problems. And so 
surf to, you know, financial advisor websites, nine out of 10 of them say we are fiduciary financial planners. We take a comprehensive approach. We've been in the business for 20 years and it's kind of like, uh, well, how, how, that's what the other yeah. 10 websites say, you know? So, uh, but if you look at the folks that, uh, you know, have the target audience, their messaging, it goes something like this, you know? You're, you're an airline pilot. Um, you know, we understand that, you know, your career might not last as long as, as someone, you know, who works in retail or works in tech. And so um, we understand, you know, that you're a little bit more high risk situation. And we understand that you have special uh, circumstances, uh, you know, around the way that your stocks are constructed from your from the airline, the way the stock options are structured, uh, the different 401k options you have. And, you know, your, your airline pilot financial world is is, is awfully complex and and we're used to dealing in that world and helping it make it less complex. So, you know, if I'm a an airline pilot and I see that kind of messaging, I'm thinking, well, this guy at least understands a little bit about my world, understands a little bit about, you know, the the problems that I have and the help that I might need. So So once you have a niche, it sounds to me like messaging kind of falls into place. Well, it does. You know, you, you just got to take this mindset of saying I'm in the business of of solving problems, not selling products. Right. And, right. and so now I, I need to articulate that. And if I can articulate that, you know, a lot of good things happen, you know, as, you know, leads and prospects are exposed to uh, to my messaging um, and they are in my niche. It's going to resonate and they're going to progress through the customer journey. Right. Um, the other thing that that, you know, is hard work for financial advisors is, is to uh, develop their value proposition. And mm. this again is one of those things that if you study uh, what high performing, highly successful firms are doing differently from the average firms, having a, a good handle on what their value proposition is happens to be one of those uh, differentiators. Explain. So value prop is, uh, you got to answer the question. Why should I do business with you instead of the competition down the street? Very simple. Mm -hmm. But if you break down the sentence, that then it gets a little bit more complicated. Why should should I? So I I need to understand the I. I need to understand the person who's going to ask that question. Why should I do business with you? Who are you? What do you do? Uh, instead of the folks down the street. And so there, there's a lot of nuance built into that, that question that, and, and if you break it down and you start to answer each of those individual components, um, you, you come up with a pretty long, you know, complicated sentence. Okay. <laughs> and so the hard work is paring that down into something that resonates with your target audience. You know, that's pretty short, you know? So, uh, and and once you've got the value proposition, you understand why you're different and why they should do business with you and who the I is. Once you understand those pieces, now the messaging does become really simple. Uh, and and you are in a problem solving mode, and and you are able to to be in a position to stop the scroll. So all of those good things start to happen. Then you have a confidence issue. All right, Jack. We've done steps one and two in your seven steps to an effective marketing plan target audience, messaging. What is step three? So step three is communication. How do you how do you deliver your message to your target audience? How do they come to know that you care about them, that you understand them, and, and that you can do good work for them? Uh, and so, you know, it, this is this, to a certain extent depends on your audience. Um, you, you want to, you want to, uh, two, two things about this. The first is you want to play in traffic. <laughs> so where, where is your audience? Okay. If your audience is, you know, print media oriented, I can't imagine who that is, but if they're print media oriented, you need to have print media, right? If they're on social media, then you need to be on social media and social media is a super broad term now. So you need, you need to figure out which of the many social media platforms are out there that your, your clients are most or, or potential clients are most likely to be on. Uh, and then you've got to figure out a way to get your message on that, on that platform. We find a lot of people are, are still email driven and really 
the most cost effective way uh, to get your message out there is by referral. And you get to the referral state by the first couple of things we talked about, you know, having the right audience mm -hmm. that understands your messaging, understands your value prop and understands why they should be doing business with you. So, you know, it makes it easier for people to do referral business. You know, and the, there are, we can go in another time uh, about how to, how to increase your referrals, but it may very well be that referral is the way that you communicate. So first step is play in the traffic. Can Does I just jump sense? in a second, Jack? You said email is still a, a viable source. 100%. That, that amazes me. I thought email was, it's so cluttered. The, well, all social media is cluttered these days, but email, I thought that was passe. Yeah, no. Definitely not. Uh, and the challenge there is to do it right. To You've got to be targeted. Using buying a list of 10,000 names, you know, from a from a, a list reseller, you know, it isn't the way to go right. in this case. What, you, what you're looking for is ways to build your email list. And if you're building your email list using uh, organic growth strategies, and supplementing that, you know, with paid uh, advertising, paid emails, um, then, you know, the, 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 you're going to grow that list. It's going to be super effective for you. You're going to get high conversion rates and, you know, life is good. Um, I, I don't know that there's any one uh, platform that drives anyone's business right now. I think all of us are looking at the web. We're looking at SEO. Uh, search engine optimization. Michael Kitsis did a study on, you know, client acquisition costs for financial advisors. Um, and he, he, when you factor in the hard cost of what you're going to buy and the time that the financial advisor has to put in to the client acquisition process, the least, the lowest client acquisition cost lead was from SEO. So, that means, you know, a couple of things. You got to have a, a pretty good website. It's got to resonate with the audience that you're trying to attract. If it's going to be high converting, it's got to be optimized so that people can find it easy. Um, and it's got to have, you know, all that conversion architecture that we like to talk about in the website. Um, and there that's a very common way for folks to grow their business. I, I, an, an advisor today should expect to be getting at least one new client a month through web and hmm. SEO, you know, so, so that's one of those areas where you're playing, literally playing in traffic, you know, where do you get the traffic, you know, to drive to your website, uh, to create the digital engagement that ultimately, you know, where email comes into play and where, you know, you're, you're going to be able to get your message out there. So one of my pet peeves when it comes to websites, make sure your links work. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, and, and yes, you got to have all those foundational things taken care of. Uh, but what I find is, is the bigger challenge is uh, content. You know, uh, having, having good content anymore uh, is critical. It is so critical. Uh, Seth Godin's talks about this concept of permission for value. People will give you permission to communicate with them through email or social media or through the web um, as long as they perceive that they're getting value from you. When, when they don't perceive that they're getting value from the digital engagement, then they're, they're going to turn it off. And, you know, that can happen in a number of different ways. So if, you, if your content is, you know, pictures and cliches, and promises, you know, what's the value to me in that? Um, if instead, you know, you understand me and you've got, you know, a white paper about how airline pilots, you know, can manage their stock options. If you've got um, uh, an infographic that helps me understand how I transition my health care from the airline to Medicare, how I bridge that gap. If you've got um, a video that says, here are some things to think about, you know, before you start your social security, you know, if you're providing that kind of content, that's a value. And the more um, targeted it is, 
you know, back to target audience, the more targeted it is, the more value it's going to have because it, the people are going to perceive you have a deeper understanding of them. So now we're back to the trust and to the empathy again. Um, and it also all speaks to problem solving. It, it's not saying I've got a new managed payout ETF fund for you that you should have, or I've got a new uh, variable annuity, you know, with an income rider, you know, that has lower expenses to it. You know, the, it, instead, it's it's communicating that you understand me and you can offer me value. And in exchange for that, I'm going to give you permission to to enter into my digital world through email. I'm going to follow you on social media. I'm going to bookmark your website. Uh, and I'm going to more likely than not post your Google review. All of those things are good, positive things to happen. I love the way this all comes back, though, to targeting your audience. The first step. Yeah. And that, you know, we think that's uh, about narrowing the scope, but it's really about deepening the understanding. Hmm. It, it's about uh, being able to 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 genuinely uh, understand that audience and, and, you know, have, have some empathy for their problems, uh, and for them to be able to perceive that that's the, that's what you have to offer. So, well, Jack, these are the first three steps of your seven steps. We did target audience messaging communication. So there are four more. We'll do them in the next podcast. You want to give us a hint of what they are? Uh, now let's keep it a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll help us get follow on uh, listeners. So uh, Patricia did an excellent job of playing the role of interviewer today. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. So thanks, folks, for joining us uh, today for the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. Feel free to like, share, comment uh, on social media about the podcast. Come back to the Breakthrough Advisor podcast page. Frequently, you'll find that we're updating uh, new podcasts with some regularity. And we look forward to talking with you if your, your need for a marketing plan uh, arises. If we've stimulated you to say, you know, yeah, I'd like to figure that out. Can someone help me? Certainly, uh, the team at, at InsureMark uh, would be happy to, to assist you with that. So until the next podcast, Patrice, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good one, Jack. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of InsureMark. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. 